Hi everyone, last time I've built a very simple castle using only square foundations and oversizing the corners. This time I'm going to show you how to build round towers and connect them with walls to create lower bailey for our castle. It's quite easy to do, in this case. The castle is located on a spur, so the walls surrounding the lower bailey will terminate on cliffs and do not have to be connected. This simplifies things greatly because the length and angle of each wall section can be changed at will. When adding additional walls there is just one simple rule to follow. The outer walls and towers can never be taller than the inner defenses. The reason is that should the enemy capture lower bailey, the inner defenses won't be compromised and still provide adequate cover and height advantage. First I'm placing a couple of square foundations to make sure that the wall will follow the line I want, then add 6 wedge foundations to make inner circle of the tower. The outside ring is made of alternating squares and wedges. What I like to do now is create the outline of the walls. I use squares to make the straight sections and whenever I want to turn I make another tower, then build them up to relatively low height and inspect the outline. I only continue to build when I'm satisfied with the layout. The turns are easy to make. Just add square to any side of the tower and continue in a straight line as long as you want. This gets a bit more complicated if you want to fully enclose an area, but it is not a concern for this specific castle design. The gate will be located between these two towers, and to protect it I added two more. This way to attack the main gate the enemies will have to stand in this small area completely surrounded by the defenders on the walls and towers. Basically this is the main idea behind designing a castle, to force the attackers to fight in unfavorable conditions, preferably inside the kill zones like this. Tall imposing walls and huge gates make for a nice set for a movie or a game, but in reality a properly designed castle will always have its gates hidden behind Barbican, protected by mold, drawbridge, etc. and out of direct line of sight of enemy siege machines. I'm using cage tiles to simulate a portcullis, but if you don't want to use mods for some reason, you can simply build a regular gate here. Just remember to leave enough space for it. The gate is 3 square tiles wide. You can see my mod list in the description. The inverted sloping walls are closest thing to an arch that's possible in game. The outer gate is left completely open so that enemies can enter the trap. Also notice that the gates are not in line. This is a variation of a bent entrance, a feature common in Arabian and Crusader castles. It is meant to hold the momentum of rushing troops and make it harder if not outright impossible to move the battering ram to the inner gate. Now to make the actual trap. I've left some room in the towers for hatches and ladders to facilitate movement. The tiles above the passages will be replaced by hatches to make murder holes and I'm also expanding the upper level of the outer gatehouse to make more. During an assault there were only two ways to enter the castle, through the gate or over the walls. The second option was quite often impossible, the walls might be too high for ladders or the terrain too steep for siege towers. The trebuchets were most of the time useless, and even in the rare occasions when they managed to destroy parts of the wall, well, instead of hundreds of tons of stone arranged in its structure, you'd have hundreds of tons of stone piled up in a heap. And there's another word for that, a barricade. Sure, it is less defensible than a wall, but still, not an easy obstacle to overcome. Especially when the defenders managed to man it before any enemies got through. So the gate was usually the easier option, hence all the additional fortifications. Of course, siege could be resolved without an assault. Starvation was one thing that no castle could defend against. All those holes in the floors of the gatehouse can be used to shoot arrows at enemies below from relative safety, or they can be equipped with siege cauldrons. When placing hatches, always pay attention to the location of the hinge. You don't want the open hatch to block the doorway. The next thing to do is to build the towers to proper height. The rule I mentioned before still stands, outer towers should always be lower than the inner ones. First I build the outer shell of the tower using alternating windows and solid walls. You might want to experiment with different patterns and use the one you like the most. 
The towers are extremely important defensive feature of the castle. Their main advantage is that they are protruding beyond the wall a bit, which allows flanking fire. Imagine a typical ladder rush, where soldiers just run up to the walls and start climbing ladders. They are open to attack from the wall above and have their sights exposed to the tower. Even if they manage to hold a small shield while climbing, they can either keep it above their head or on one side. That is why when designing a castle you should always place towers on each corner of the walls, so that there are no spots where enemies are vulnerable from one side only. That's basically how the kill zones inside the castle work. Through the design you force the enemies into places where they are exposed to attacks from multiple sides at once. The Barbican is usually the first kill zone, then you might have a trap court. The Bailey itself can be turned into a kill zone with properly designed battlements, or at least expose enemies to attacks from upper walls or citadel. My point is, the castle is a death trap. Movies love to show sequences like gates being destroyed by battering ram, followed by slaughter of the defenders, while in properly designed castle breaking through the gate actually means that you are now between the hammer and the anvil. Of course, a lot of castles were taken by direct assault, but, as with everything in life, it's complicated. Some architects were better than others, some locations were more defensible, and most importantly, building a castle was a huge financial undertaking which not many could afford. Extra defensive features increased that cost significantly, not to mention they required additional time to construct and increased the number of troops required to adequately man the walls, which translates to higher costs of maintaining the castle. That's why most castles were a result of a compromise between the ideal design and economic reality. Machicolations above the gate are built in the exact same way as in part 1. As for the towers, you can use stairs or ladders inside. Just remember the stairs occupy a single square, so you need to connect them to triangle tile and also leave enough headroom. The interiors can later be used as barracks, armories, to store supplies, and one might be a dedicated prison. Contrary to what games taught us, there are no dungeons under most castles. First of all, castle never served a role similar to modern prison. There were facilities for that in cities. Sometimes children were kept as hostages to ensure the loyalty of their families, but they were most of the time well looked after and could freely roam around the castle. It's a complicated matter, and the word hostage in its modern meaning doesn't describe it well. Sometimes nobles were captured for ransom, but that still resembled more a house arrest rather than imprisonment. When a prisoner had to be held for whatever reason inside the castle, usually a well-secured room in the tower was used and only later, as the castle designs evolved, it was moved underground. As for the basement, it was used for storage. You probably heard in some documentary or read in a history book about sieges lasting for many months. The castle must have had enough supplies for that. So if you want a realistic castle, fill it with crates, barrels and firewood. Nah, I'm joking. Build something cool. It's a game after all. The machiculations on top of the tower are a little different. First I'm making the regular square ones just like before, then fill the gaps with wedge tiles, leaving one out. Those will be permanently open since there are no triangle hatches available. Finally, I make crenellated wall by alternating windows and fences. This wall should be a lot thicker to be realistic, but at least its height is correct. This step is optional. I like to place roof wedges below the triangle ceiling tiles to make the tower look a bit more massive. This is purely decoration. Here you can see both variants side by side. The two walls here will need much collations on both sides as they form a part of the kill zone near the gate but are exposed to the outside too. Always pay attention to the position of the hinge when placing hatch doors. They should be below the fence so that when opened they provide additional cover for the people on the wall. If you can't rotate the hatch door to correct orientation, try moving around and approaching from different angle and they should snap correctly. 
Inside the Barbican I've placed some stars to reach the gates and foundations to make a narrow, safe path. Then I've used wooden palisades to make walls harder to approach. Now the trap is complete. There are no safe spots inside, nowhere to hide, and what's best, enemies inside can be attacked from all sides and the defenders need only a single click to close the machicolations hatch or a step back to be safely out of reach of arrows fired from below. Just like in part 1 I'm going to put a lot of wooden palisades below the walls, since it is impossible to dig a moat in game. Making the walls unapproachable is one of the most important things for every castle. That is why choosing good location is crucial. A spur or a hilltop provides natural defenses, even better if at least some of the walls can be placed on top of a cliff. The elevation also plays major role, as siege machines might have trouble shooting high enough to reach the walls or in some cases, the terrain makes it impossible to deploy them at all. Second best option is moat, either dry or filled with water as it protects the walls from ladder rush, but not from artillery. If you have no other options, then temporary defenses such as wooden spikes also work to some degree. The idea is to make the walls as hard as possible to assault, and funnel enemy forces to the kill zones. Tops of the towers can be finished in two ways, either keep it simple and just place some fences around the stairs, or build a small structure to house the stairs. I'm using torches for light, Bracketed and protected. On the walls I start by placing two, one on each side, then divide the remaining space equally. I have completed all the remaining towers and wall sections in the same manner. The main part is done. All the defenses are in place, but the castle is still empty. In the next part I will show you how you can fill the baileys and decorate the interiors. If you want to do it on your own, that's great! I hope you'll make a really great looking place and share it with us. One thing I'd like to mention, if you're looking for inspiration or reference online, you might find it very confusing. Castle designs changed a lot over the years. Some were built as late as 20th century. Their role changed as well, from defensive to prestigious palaces or administrative centers. So if you simply search for the term castle or castle design, you will get extremely varied results. Even using specific terms like Gothic can yield some strange results due to the revival movements. The games and movies are a special case. The castles in them were designed by artists, who in most cases looked for references and created amazing pieces of art, but didn't understand the principles of castle design and how each element should work. Game of Thrones is a good example here. The designs are beautiful, but mostly useless and confusing. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing so you won't miss the next part. Thanks for watching.